everybody, how you doing? Hopefully you can hear me okay. This is a pretty random uh, last minute live noodles. And in fact, I'm going to turn this up a little bit. Wanted to share a couple cool horns in my collection. And sorry, I'm talking from the other side perspective here. Um, that's why. Oh, you can't see my head. I have to do that. So hold on a second. Riveting, riveting television here. Oh, it sounds like today we might actually get our freight shipment from our doublers. So, hi Donald, how are you? Today we're going to talk about a couple of horns. We're going to talk about the A1, uh, the A2, and the A1 version 2. So this is uh, exciting for me because these are both horns that are in my collection. And um, I'm going to start with the A2 because I got my mouthpiece in. And I'm also using this Lafrique Tone Bridge, which is quite lovely as well. So it's going to be pretty lo-fi, although I'm going to be recording into this ribbon mic. know if that volume is okay. I'm using different mics to talk and to play. How are you? And congratulations on the Baylor men advancing. They were in my bracket, so that's good. It's the first time I've ever done a, bra a bracket, by the way. And it's not for gambling purposes. It's just for fun. Um, but yeah, this is the A2. Uh, it's funny because we had a customer call in for a consult and was wondering what they should choose. And so I said, well, let me take the A2. I have this A2 as mine, but I have it here at the shop for people to try when they come. Um, and I said, well, let me take it home and play it a little bit this weekend. And I played it. Um, it's such a solid trumpet. So, and someone said, well, what, what do you think between the A2 and the A1? Um, of course, the A1 is this beauty right here. And I, I love that one as well. So I thought today would be a good chance to do a live noodles between the two horns. You get to choose the song. So please post your song requests here. I know it was a, a little impromptu. But uh, we're, we're very, we're, I'm very excited uh, to play. Also, to give you just a general shop update, uh, I, I mentioned at the very beginning that the doublers horns should be arriving in the shop any day now. Um, so we have a fair amount of pre-orders. Thank you very much. And we'll be getting those out when we can. Uh, if you have questions, of course, call us. Um, also, uh, we hope to start being open for appointments as of May. So if you want to come to ACB here in Kansas City, uh, we'll pick you up from the airport, of course. Um, we'll give you some barbecue, of course. Uh, please uh, call us at 816-410-0826 or email us. We're, we're really excited to be opening, um, hopefully uh, soon, making sure that you're safe and uh, we're safe. So, okay, song requests, please post them. Hopefully uh, they're calming in the chats. Um, but I played a little bit of what is this thing called love on the A2. Let me play a little bit on the A1. Let's see if I can switch this. Hopefully I can still switch it with keeping the, the freak, so chic still in. I think I can, I've done this a few times. So, all right, let's see now. So this is A2. 
1, version 2. I'm going to bring my volume over here. So the, the big, big difference I feel right off the bat, this is a lighter trumpet than the A2. Obviously there's a silver plate difference. This is a, um, a satin lacquer, gold lacquer that we use on the horn. Um, there's a lot of aesthetic differences on the horns. The similarity in terms of how they play, it's pretty close. I mean, they're both medium large instruments. So um, they're, they're really great all around instruments. Um, oh, thanks. I see that you watched the driveway concert. We are hoping to have a driveway concert soon. Um, the weather's starting to get pretty nice here in the Kansas City area. hear my talking this mic is a lot softer for talking but I'm gonna play the same thing on the a2 Tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. This is Live Noodles. Uh, it was pretty impromptu because I was expecting to be unloading uh, literally over a ton of doublers. And that's the weight. I wish we had 2,000, uh, well, we have over 2,000 pounds of doublers uh, coming. So, uh, but since the delivery truck is not here, I decided to take advantage of this free time and do a comparison between the A2, that's what you just heard, and the A1. So I see along came Betty. Um, I'll say it, I always ask this question. People probably don't get the uh, um, uh, right answer on this, but who was Betty? So I'll play along came Betty. A little bit on this and then a little bit on the A2. Uh,
Acorns are not stuck in the Suez. Um, there's been huge delays for the previous past year plus due to imports and customs. Everything has been delayed. It's ridiculously slow. Um, something we can't control. Um, the doublers don't go through the Suez, so it's not a problem. Uh, that's mostly that canals used mostly for raw materials uh, such as oil and steel and things like that. Um, unfortunately, it's affected a lot of other businesses, but in this case, our horns have been in the U.S. clearing customs for about a week now, and they should be uh, here very shortly. So that was a little Long King Betty, which uh, I can't really remember. No, I, I sort of remember. I need a gig to remember. Um, Betty, by the way, was the name about of Herb Pomeroy's uh, first wife. So if you didn't know, Benny Golson and Herb Pomeroy did a lot of playing together when uh, Benny was young. They played a lot in Boston and especially played at this club called The Stables. Now that later on became this song which was named for Herb and Benny. Where are you from? I'm seeing so many friends here. It's it's wonderful. Um, but that stable mates, that the stable mates were Benny Golson and Herb Pomeroy, who played at this club in Boston years ago called the Stables. So there you go. There's your random factoid of um, these. If you have technical questions about the difference between the A1 and A2, please let me know. I mean, I helped design this one completely. Um, and I also, uh, Munich and Scotland and everywhere. So cool. And I help, I did a lot of help with this horn as well, the A2. Um, let me play a little bit of Stable Mates on this horn because I just played it on the other horn. And of course, if you have song requests, let me know. I might play them. I might not. So. Thank <laughs> you. 
questions. Yeah, please. I mean, it's a little bit of a challenge to go back and forth quickly, but I, I hope that you can hear the differences. Um, I'll play some something other than just jazz too, of course. Um, the Okay, I've got a few comments here I want to just address as well. Um, yeah, I've been practicing a lot more, but I've also been biking more. So um, having the ISO, uh, I call it my practice fort at my house has helped. Waking up early and practicing has been a good thing. Um, so I'm playing an acrylic rim on this mouthpiece. I'm allergic to silver and gold. And you'll actually see that I'm a little red on this. Um, um, I'm not so sure about that, Dennis, since I talked to, he might have had a girlfriend named Betty, but actually Herb Pomeroy's first wife was named Betty, and Benny Golson wrote the song for Herb's wife. So, um, set, someone just said any update on the satin doublers? Literally, I thought I'd be unboxing the, the, the truck shipment, but it's in Kansas City. It's just at the... Uh, the distribution before it gets here. Most likely the doublers will be in in the next two days uh, and then we'll start the long process because there's a lot of pre-orders of getting everything out. So hopefully we'll be fully caught up within two weeks of all of our pre-orders. Um, but if you have any questions, just email the shop. Um, yeah, so um, cooking at the Continental, I don't know that. So, um, but uh, Again, if you have questions about the two horns in terms of like just general things, uh, bore size on these two horns, it's the same. Mark Weatherby, that's cool, man. Um, oh, I think I could probably play, I don't know if I've ever played, this is a shocker, uh, ever played Moonlight in Vermont, but I think I could probably play it. So I've listened to it en enough. So let's start on the A2. But before I do that, I was just gonna say some general characteristics of the horn. Um, the A2s come mostly in silver plate because that's what a lot of people want on their professional trumpets. There, there's two selected versions, the 50 gauge yellow brass, which this is, or uh, 50 gauge yellow brass in a polished lacquer. Um, the A1 selected is a 50 gauge yellow brass as well, but it's in the satin lacquer, gold lacquer. Okay, uh, Moonlight Vermont. Let's see, I've, I've never played it. Close for the first time ever, but um, uh, let's talk a little bit more differences between the two horns, uh, and then please keep those songs coming. Uh, Punta Gorda, by the way, my dad lives in Northport, so beautiful place. Um, the closest to, like, this is very traditional, so if you're looking for something close, like if I was going to play Hindemith, uh, let me play Hindemith on this horn, uh, and then play it on the A1.
most stable of the two. Um, okay, so this is good. You're asking co comparisons. The, the bell sizes are different. Um, uh, if, you, if you're looking more like a 72 flare, you probably want to check out in, at least in Adam's line. Um, this would, the A1 would be pretty good. The A2 is probably going to be a little too clean and refined for what you're looking for. Um, thank you for your mouthpiece purchase. So, um, and uh, most stable of the two, if you're looking for a traditional feel, because um, if you, and if you think you're, the, the GM1 is a little slippery, I would go with the A2 myself. Uh, Green Dolphin Street. I'll play Melody on both and maybe I'll play melody and half of a chorus on each. Keep those song requests going. And if you have more questions about the horns, that's why we do these. Again, if you're just tuning in, we're doing a very impromptu live noodles, a two-channel stream. So if you're not seeing some of the comments, it could be because the YouTubers are posting comments and the Facebook people are posting comments. So I'm doing a stream on both things. So uh, let's do Green Dolphin Street starting on A1. some song requests that's what i just played um and uh so let's see uh in a sentimental mood i'll do that on both horns if in case you're wondering this mouthpiece i'm playing is my acb 3c how does it compare to a three bach 3c well it depends on what bach 3c you have we have uh 13 different scans of bach 3c's on file and all bach all of them are different so um but uh yeah i think the a1 is my vibe but also remember the A1 is my primary trumpet. That's the trumpet I practice on. So it's a little bit of different when I go from A1 to A2, um, but yes. And for an improviser, maybe the better choice is the A1 Gen 2. We're selling a lot of them and three of the guys in the shop play one. So um, we have a high bias towards that. Let's do um, In a Sentimental Mood. This will be nice so you can hear it on a ballad. And I'm just gonna play um, yes, Donald, I see you've quoted like 10 songs. I'll get to some of them. So, um, but there are other people commenting too. So, uh, uh I'm going to play, uh, in a sentimental mood.
so what do you hear? Do you, I'm, hey, love my A1, B2. Yes. Um, great question by Pete Carroll here. Um, so what is your favorite trumpet player? My wife is my favorite trumpet player. Um, sorry. Uh, she plays trumpet, so of course she's my favorite. Um, but my favorite trumpet mentor is Clark Terry, of course. Uh, everybody knows how much I love CT. Um, Pete Carroll, can you compare? He's on Facebook, so I'm going to just say this comment for the YouTubers that are also watching. Can you compare the difference in resistance between both and how does traditional tuning slide A2 affect this? Yes, perfect question, wonderful question. So the A1 is a balance of resistance. This horn is slightly more compact and it has a lot to do with the double brace tuning slide. You can see there's two braces right there. Also, it's got a standard tuning slide configuration. Um, this lead pipe on the A1 is slightly more compact right here, but then gets quite large. The um, tuning slide is only single braced, so it's a little bit floppier in general. And then because you have the bend here, and then you have the bend here, um, you have a little bit more openness all, all around. Similar to your uh, A4 Pete, where you have these big bends and the big bends help, you know, uh, thicken up the sound and increase a little bit of, of the slot. So a couple of these song requests are a little challenging. So, so it's a polyboard. No, it's not. This is a, this is a, and every, honestly, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, William Johnson on YouTube. Everything's a poly bore because bore size can't just be determined by the measurement right here. Watch my uh, YouTube video on why bore size is overrated. So, uh, how would you compare either's to the older new Bobby shoe? Well, um, I've owned the new shoe and I have a briefcase model of the first 8310Z. Uh, both are more open, uh, these two horns. Both uh, are slightly warmer sounding. Um, especially over the first 8310Z. I think that the new 8310Z is an incredible trumpet. I don't like the valves that much. Um, and I think it's a little bright, but that's just me. But I also come from this sound concept, which is slightly warmer. So uh, Sidewinder, Red Clay, and Crisis are a little hard to play by yourself. So yeah, um, all Adams, um, uh, all Adams professional trumpets, unless they're too alloyed instruments uh, uh two alloy bells are uh, one piece i'll show you a two alloy hold on they don't do this with their trumpets but they do this with their flugelhorns where you can see that the flare of this horn is nickel and the stem of the bell is a red brass but we're not here to talk we're not here to talk flugelhorns we're here to uh, talk about these two horns. These are good questions. If you have more questions about these two horns, that's great. Um, someone asked to play some high notes on it. So, okay. I, I haven't really switched much from my 3C lately. Um, it's been just basically the mouthpiece I play. So I'm gonna play a little bit on something classical. I just played some, some earlier and now I'm playing commercial mouthpiece. I'll get to it. Um, but let's see. Uh, let's play. Let's see if this comes out before. I'll t as Miles would say, I'll play it now and tell you later. I have to say, I don't play my small mouthpiece anymore, so it's a little bit uh, of a challenge to play it. Uh, I've been literally playing everything and I'm forcing myself because at the beginning of the pandemic, I took home our entire kit of mouthpieces and played um, everything and recorded it. And you can see that on our, uh, on our YouTube videos of detailed mouthpiece overviews. We have like 50 of them. so. No, I'm not going to add the Morrison to this. This is just A1 and A2. Sorry. 
Um, the A2 is, is a little bit more um, directional, so it might be getting picked up by the microphone a little bit better. I actually just ordered for myself an A1 in silver plate with a 40 thickness, a very light thickness yellow brass bell. I'm excited to get it just to see how that goes. So um, how would you compare them to the Shilky B1? Um, I would say that this is not really like the Shilky in terms of the feel. I, I love the Shilky B1, that's a great trumpet. Um, I would say that the A1 is closer in terms of the, like the blow resistance. I don't know if that makes sense. The sound on both horns I prefer, but I'm also an uh, I'm an Adams guy. Everybody knows that. Um, I just love how they make their instruments and how the instruments sound. Um, uh, someone asked for some classical stuff, so let's play. Uh, well, let's see what I can do on. I can give you some Hindemith. I gave you a little Hindemith earlier, but I'll, here's some Halsey Stevens. for the brain cramp. this tie note on purpose uh some good questions coming here uh and song requests too again if you're just tuning in and thank you so much for tuning in this is a very impromptu live noodles where i'm playing the a1 and a2 and you can check these out um if you're just catching the, the stream we've been going now for about 35 minutes or so so you might make a request that i've already played um but uh, in the meantime, uh, feel free to ask any questions about the horns. Um, happy to talk about how they relate with other horns, uh, but we're not going to play other horns in the shop. We have hundreds, but we're only going to play the A1 and A2. So, uh, so I learned about Adams by, I was playing at the 2009 ITG conference that was in Harrisburg and my flugelhorn was uh, I had a nice old Yamaha 631 and it had electrical tape on it. It was literally falling to pieces. So I was there partially to perform and, and present, but also to um, find a new flugelhorn. And I ended up finding the Ad Adams had one table with like a bajillion horns on it. And I had never met Meal. Um, Meal spoke a little English, but not much. And we hit it off and I played one note on the F1 flugelhorn and it changed my life. Later on that year, that was uh, summer, spring of uh, 2009, in the winter of 2009, I helped them present at the, for the first time at the Midwest Band and Orchestral Clinic. And from that, uh, they asked me to open my shop. So they uh, convinced me to open my shop. Um, so I'm highly indebted to Adams and I've helped in terms of the trumpets and the flugelhorns, I've helped with most of their horns in terms of um, the design. So there you go. I don't know if that helps or not. So ornithology. So uh, yeah, I can play it. Not my favorite, but I can play it. Uh, but I just played something you requested for. So let me just keep going to scroll. Ah, I can't get started. That's actually a nice song to play. I'll just play the melody 
on both horns uh, so you can hear the sound of the two horns. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, this is the A2. Ruti. songs in 12 keys folks but uh i don't know can you hear a difference between the two horns the a what i just played <coughs> sorry i'm gonna knights in tunisia i don't know knights in tunisia is that like knights in columbus so um but uh i'm gonna get some water because i'm a little stuffy here so um <clears throat> what do you hear the difference between the a1 and a2 post them in your comments here mm. I think that ice is um, totally different. The A4 is a completely different beast. Um, A4 is more open, broader, um, really a soloist horn. Uh, and in that regard, Copernicus is an offshoot of, I think of Copernicus as being mostly like an A4, but a lot of playing elements to this A1. Um, even though everything in the horns are different, the, Valve block's different. The lead pipe's different. Um, it don't mean a thing if you ain't got that string. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da makes no difference if it's sweet or hot. Just give it to all it's got. Uh, also, just a, the the selected model A4 is a large bore trumpet, and in Adams, large bore is 470, so it's quite robust. Uh, for me, I like a little bit more resistance in my horn, so that's why I go with one of these two horns. Um, and I have three Adams B flat trumpets in my own collection. So what's the difference between a lead horn and a soloist horn? Well, um, lead trumpets are more directional. They're uh, more projecting. They're more, uh, in terms of, think about the sound shape, uh, in terms of the width of a trumpet, um, the, the width of the A4, because the bell is large, um, it spreads. The, a horn like an A5, which is a commercial trumpet, it's direct. It goes out in the hall a little bit more. So when I say that, I think uh, that's primarily the difference. My Copernicus is a very wide sounding horn. Even though it sounds very nice on a microphone, in a concert hall, the sound, once it hits the bell, it goes. Whew. 
Um, so I like having different horns for different jobs. I wouldn't play my Copernicus if I was playing lead trumpet, and I wouldn't probably play Coper Copernicus if I was playing second trumpet in a brass quintet. So uh, what do you feel and hear in difference? Uh, of these two horns, I love the sound of the A1. Uh, it's definitely more my concept of sound, though. It's a bright sound, but it has, uh, it has brightness and warmth at the same time. It has good presence. Uh, it's very fun to play. Also, I play it more than the A2, so I think it's going to sound better overall. I think it tapes really well. So, um, uh, and uh, what do I, uh, um, in terms of my, what I feel, um, this A2 is very directional. It goes out in the hall really beautifully. Um, it's very crisp. The articulations are really centered. Um, and it's a little bit more restrictive in terms of the old overall lullaby a birdland. Lullaby of birdland. Um, I could play blue skies. Lullaby of birdland. So I know I'm on you today, but so I've got to keep you honest. So what time of metal do you prefer on the A2? I'm a yellow brass guy when it comes to a con conventional trumpet. Um, although I did have an A2 with a sterling silver bell, and that was quite lovely. The sterling bell option for customers is about $1,200 additional. And you either love the sterling or you don't. Uh, people who do respond to it well um, really enjoy it. Uh, I do know a friend of mine has uh, an A2 with a heavier gold brass bell and really likes that. Um, but they tend to have a slightly brighter tonal concept. So that sort of offsets that. Um, in general, though, I will tell you, uh, you, with Adams, you have the selected models and then you have the custom models. The selected models, folks, are there for a reason. They play so well because we have gone through so many iterations of them. Uh, but we're happy to custom build and also talk to you either uh, with a Zoom call, uh, hopefully uh, later on this year in person. And uh, like, for instance, we just uh, built for one of my friends who's an incredible jazz trumpet player. Um, uh, we built him an A1 uh, in copper lacquer with a heavier yellow brass bell. He came and he played a bunch of things. Um, He's had both of his shots and, um, you know, had a negative test so he could come. And uh, it was really cool to hear the differences. So he was tied between these two horns, actually. But then he, he fell in love with the way the A1 plays. And we've been selling a lot of A1 trumpets. Uh, so I would say there's a reason for that. It's just a great, fun, fun trumpet. So great fun. So, um uh, okay, so let's see. Uh, Lullaby of Birdland, I can play that. I guess I should play it since I gave you so much flack on the title.
So I'm gonna check those out. No, I don't have a, an Adams for under $1,000. So I would like a Tesla for eight grand as well, but sometimes that's uh, not possible. Um, I like a darker tone, it seemed to, uh, they seem. Uh, in general, Adams, I will say in general, unless you're playing like something like the A5 or the A10, and hopefully this new A1 that I've ordered is going to be like this as well. Um, like I said, I ordered a silver plated A1 with a 40 gauge, which is the lightest gauge they make in their trumpet bells and yellow brass bell. I want it to be very much a, a, a commercial trumpet in my repertoire. I have some good commercial trumpets already, but I'm looking to replace it. I kind of want to be playing all Adams, with the exception I have one horn that's not an Adams that I play most days, um, and that's my Getzen cornet. Um, but uh, yeah, so you've tuned into uh, Live Noodles in case you're just joining. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. I hope you uh, are having a beautiful day and uh, just a couple shop updates. If you're tuning in and you're going to be like, where are the doublers? They're on a truck in Kansas City, but they're not outside of our shop uh, getting loaded into our warehouse soon. We hope, in fact, as soon as tomorrow, we'll be able to start unpacking and then uh, uh, doing all of our optimizations. Uh, it will take some time for us to get through our orders, but they're coming. Um, second question we've been asked, when are you gonna be open for appointments? Um, Donald, if you have a question about Adams, you can email us. Um, uh, I think it's still out of your price range. Um, but, uh, you know, um, uh, so second question is, are, when are you going to be open for appointments? Uh, in general, uh, we're still waiting to see. Uh, both uh, Kyle and I have had our first vaccination, and uh, Patrick is getting um, his vaccination soon. Um, once we are fully vaccinated here and have had time to fully adjust to the vaccination, we will um, hopefully be starting the process of appointments. Uh, that's a question you want to email us and ask us. We're happy to chat about it. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this uh, A1 versus A2 video. I'm glad I did it because I, I'm i going to now tell you what I like. I love my A1, of course. So um, I our boosters, the KGU boosters, are only good on our mouthpieces. Sorry. Um, but KGU is a good company. You can check out their boosters uh, on their site as well. Very, very, very good. Um, that being said, thank you so much. I appreciate you all. We have had a great sales month and we are so appreciative of all your amazing support. We're here for you. We can't, we're expanding uh, in terms of our roster. We'll tell you that soon. Um, very excited for some new hires coming into the shop. And in the meantime, if you have questions, you can always reach out to us. Info at Austin Custom Brass dot com or 816-410-0826. I am not going to play the Bugle Boy from Company B. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go back to work, but I appreciate you all very much. Take care. Have an awesome day and we'll talk soon. Ciao.